I'm Physio Andrea and you're watching TSC Connect. Today we're talking about scoliosis screening and sharing some of the tips and tricks that we use at the Scoli Clinic and the Scoliosis Collective to ensure that we're getting a standardized and accurate measurement. Here we go. The most simple way to do screening is through something called the Adams Ford Bend Test. And that's where you stand behind your patient and ask them to bend forward, keeping their legs straight, and then observing their back from the horizon view and looking to see if one side appears higher than the other. So the Adams Ford Bend Test is good for a general screen. However, there are times when you may want to take an objective measurement to actually see the degrees of rotation in the person's spine, whether it be your patient if you're a therapist or your child if you're a parent who's watching this. So we have a couple tools that we use to take this measurement. The most common one and the one that a lot of healthcare professionals use is called the scoliometer. So we have two different brands here. They're just slightly different in branding, but they function the same. What you can see is that there, each of them have a ball that's floating in water, and there are also measurements on each side to show the degrees of rotation, whether it be to the right or to the left. The other important feature of a scoliometer is that it has this notch here, which allows space for the spinous processes or the vertebrae when the person is bending forward. Another way to take this measurement if you don't have a scoliometer, which are available um, often on Amazon if you look, um, is to use a smartphone and to look for an app that's like a, a, a level. For the iPhone, there's one that's called Measure and it looks like that. You may have to search it in the features of your iPhone because it's not always on um, available on your home screen. And then once you go into the app, toggle to the function that says level, it's there on this side here. And then what you'll see is when you flip your iPhone to be horizontal, now it functions very similarly to a scoliometer. The only trick here, um, which we'll get to a little bit more into the tips, is that you have to ensure that your phone is actually held vertically because if you tilt it forwards or backwards, it really affects the measurement. The other major difference between an iPhone and a scoliometer is that, of course, the iPhone doesn't have a notch for the spine. Um, and so what you can do there is just place your thumbs when you're doing the measurement, place your thumbs under your phone so that you can create a little space for the spine when your patient or your child is bending forward. We have a video showing an example of how someone can take the measurement using the scoliometer or the smartphone um, and use it on the person's body in front of them. And so as we go through, I'll pause it and point out a few of the important tips that we use as therapists um, to help to create a standardized measure. Let's talk about the technique first, and then we'll discuss interpreting the findings after. To standardize the person's testing position, ask them to take their shoes and socks off, stand with their feet together on a flat, hard surface, then reach their arms out in front of them with their palms together. Even if you think they may have a leg length difference, don't correct for this for now. Then cue the person to tuck their chin to their chest and slowly roll forward to reach towards the floor while keeping their legs straight. Now here's the tricky part. As the person is bending forward, ensure that the scoliometer or the phone is at the peak or the highest point of their back. The assessor also needs to keep the scoliometer or phone vertical and to look at the scoliometer from the same level. And that's why Physio Madison here in this video is kneeling down as she goes. You can also sit on a chair if you prefer. As the scoliometer is making its way down the spine, take note to see if the ball is gliding to the right or left. If it is, try to take note of the highest number that the ball reaches and roughly at what area of the back this maximum reading is happening at. Is it in the upper thoracic area, the thoracic, the lumbar, or the pelvis? 
If it feels overwhelming when you're first trying this, don't worry, that's normal. There is a lot to coordinate, so keep practicing. Let's talk about analysis. So one of the main things to note is that although this scoliometer shows degrees on the measurements here, remember that these degrees do not correlate with the degrees on the x-ray because the scoliometer measures the amount of rotation in the trunk when the person is flexed forward, whereas the x-ray measures the degrees of the curve when they're standing from the back view. Now, when you're watching the scoliometer as it's placed on the person's spine, take a look at the ball and look at the direction that it moves towards. So when the ball moves towards the right on the scoliometer, remember that it's actually a left rotation in the trunk because this side, which is the left side, would be higher than the right side. Remember that you're going to be standing behind the person and looking at them. So this is the right side of the body and this is the left side. And alternately, when the ball moves towards the left side of the scoliometer, it's actually a right rotation in the trunk. So what measurement is significant? Typically we say that any rotation that is greater than five degrees indicates that there may be something going on in the spine that is less likely to be due to just a muscle imbalance and it could be something more structural underneath. If you're unsure, refer your patient or bring your child to a physiotherapist or physician or other healthcare professional who is trained in scoliosis who can help assess and screen your child for scoliosis. They can advocate for you and help guide you through the medical system and provide some insight on available treatment options for you along the way. We hope that provides some more information and tips on how to assess and screen using the Adams Ford Bed Test and the scoliometer. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.